Okay, this is calorimeter constant six seven. <clears throat> Excuse me, six seven. Um, on your notes it says ca bomb calorimeter, but you know what? It should be it should be called instead calorimeter constant. Okay, it's for any calorimeter, which is a bomb calorimeter or a, or a non bomb calorimeter, and I'll mention on that. In fact, uh, um, you only need to work number eleven. And you know, I looked at the problems a couple times here. You can just do 12B if you want to. Because 11 has A and B, and then 12 has A, B, 1, 2, 3, then the B, part B at the bottom. You can just do B. But you have to read the question to find the heat capacity. You'll know what I mean in a minute. And then you do B. Um, if you want to do all of it, you can. But I, 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 this could be a short lesson. And maybe this will be a little breath of fresh air after that long, crazy one that you had before. Okay. Um, now... This is true for any calorimeter. There's a, um, I'll mention, let me, well, let me, let me draw a calorimeter for you a moment. Remember I said it's a lot like having a styrofoam cup. Inside another styrofoam cup with a lid is a calorimeter, like a thermos. It, the purpose of a calorimeter is that you do an experiment inside it. With thermometer, you're going to measure the temperature. You know, you might even have a timer with that to measure as time goes by. But in a calorimeter, it has a lid on it. And inside there, a lot of times, pretty much all the ones that we do, there'll be water, and you'll put something into the water. It could be chemicals that, that are both two solutions, and they mix, or it could be water, you put a metal in it like we talked about before. That's a calorimeter. A calorimeter should be like a thermos. You know, you want to you wanna insulate it so that um, only heat is exchanging between the things inside the calorimeter. Like, for example, I'll use an example, like hot water. Have cold water, you put a hot metal in it. The metal is going to cool off when it gets in the cold water. Hot metal, put it in the, in the cold water, cools off. The metal undergoes exothermic change. It's releasing heat. The water is gaining heat. So the metal loses heat to the water. Water heats up. Metal cools down. Water heats up. They meet at an equilibrium temperature. That's what happens in a calorimeter. Now, we don't want the calorimeter to be a factor. Like, for example... Um, what if the calorimeter itself is probably, what if it's warmer, um, it, it absorbs some of the heat too. So the, the metal, well I should say, the calorimeter and the water could be the same temperature. They could both be 25, we'll say room temperature. But now you put the hot metal in there, the water gets warm, but some of the heat from the water heats up the calorimeter itself. That does happen a little bit. It's not intended, but in, depending on the reaction and the amount you have, the calorimeter might need to be taken into consideration. So there is an equation that looks like this to find what's called the calorimeter constant. And in this one, the C would be um, the calorimeter constant. And I'll tell you about that in a moment. But okay, but, but now let me back up for a moment and just mention, read this thing where it says bomb calorimeter. A bomb calorimeter is a calorimeter containing a rigid container. Since volume cannot change, work can um, the work cannot be done. All the energy will be converted into heat. It should say work cannot be done. No work. Oh, it says no work can be done. My my photocopy was messed up. Since the volume cannot expand, so all that comes in the form of heat. In the in a bomb calorimeter, energy changes involved register as a heat flow. For, all right, for any, but I wrote below it, for any specific calorimeter, that's why the title is a little bit misleading. There's a problem for the homework that will say bomb calorimeter, but it doesn't matter whether it's a bomb calorimeter or not for you guys. I mean, everything we do in calorimetry, we assume that the pressure stays constant, okay? That, it, um, that the, the system can, uh, if needed, can expand or contract the volume. Well, in a bomb calorimeter, it cannot. And um, so anyway, I guess it becomes more important the the, uh, the the equation here to use that for the calorimeter. All right, so the point is that with a bomb calorimeter, you'll be able to get even more exact when you're trying to calculate what's going on. If it's done inside a bomb calorimeter, you'll get a, get a better result, okay? I think that's, that's the idea of this, the best kind of calorimeter you could use. But we're not going to use those in our, in our general, you know, in our, not general, but in our AP, even in our high school. Okay. Um, all right. So let me explain about this 
So in this equation for calorimeter constant, Q is still heat. In fact, let me tell you this. It looks a lot like, remember this, QMC T2 minus T1. Well, really, this you can, I consider this to be the same as this equation. The only difference is we don't have to put in the mass because the calorimeter's mass, if you were to weigh it, it's going to be the same today as it is tomorrow, the next day, next day. It doesn't get abused or broken or whatever. Don't use rusty material. It'll mess up. So what they do is they just it's just combined. The mass and C are in one thing, the calorimeter constant. So it just makes it a little bit easier. Every time you, you want to do a, a, a problem or an experiment using the calorimeter, if you want to calculate the calorimeter's effect on your, um, on your experiment, if you want to calculate for the calorimeter, you don't want to have to go weigh the calorimeter every time. That would be kind of goofy. So you just can know that, hey, this calorimeter I'm giving you, the constant is 3.75 or whatever it is, whatever the number is. And we're going to see a problem in a moment. Now, I'll show you one more thing. And in fact, I'll use that, that example that I gave you with, the, with the, hot, the hot metal into the water. Remember we talked about Q of the water would equal, okay, first I'll tell you that the Q of the water is equal to the Q of the metal, except we know the metal one is negative. So the negative heat of the metal will equal Q heat flow for the water. So if the metal lost... Just say the metal lost 110 joules of heat, okay? You calculate Q, Q, M, C, T2 minus T1 for the metal. You calculate that out, and it comes out negative 110. Well, if I make it negative negative 110, that will be the heat gained by the water, all right? We talked about that. Q of the water and Q of the metal are the same, but one has to be made negative. Metal loses the heat, and the, the, Q, the water gains the heat. Okay, the better way to write it, I told you when you're doing a calculation, Q of the water plus Q of the metal will have to equal zero. That will account for all the heat flow. One, you know, again, if that's positive 110, uh oh, okay, I can write my number. And if that's negative 110, well, then that's going to equal zero. Okay, well, now let's talk about this calorimeter constant. Q equals C delta T. When you do an experiment in a calorimeter, even in a, in, a, in a styrofoam cup, you can consider that to be a calorimeter as well. When you do that, um, you know this is not really true, not 100% true. Some of the heat from the metal is going to heat up the calorimeter. Even if it's styrofoam, it's going to get... You've, you've held, held something in the styrofoam, even coffee, and it was warm. You could tell it was warm. It was making the styrofoam cup warmer. So even um, if you put one inside another, it'll be warm. A thermos can't be perfect, you know. It, one day, later on in the day, hours later, it's going to, you know, it's going to end up getting the, the liquid inside. is going to get cool or hot or whatever, whatever you're trying to do. It's going to do the opposite. So um, really, the true thing would be saying... The Q of the water plus the Q of the metal plus the Q of the calorimeter, that equals zero. We never talked about that in our experiments, and we assume, and, and on AP, they pretty much always say, assume heat loss to the gained or lost by the calorimeter is negligible. That means you can ignore that. You don't have to worry about it. But there is a time when they can use a calorimeter constant and ask you to find the calorimeter constant. So that's what we'll do here. So if there were then you'd put another number there. Now, again, we will say if, that, if one was 110, the, the, the amount is going to be a really small amount of heat. It's going to be very small compared to the other, but it, it is going to be a factor, and in some experiments, it could be needed. That's why we need to know about this calorimeter constant. Now, here's the part, the math, and it's pretty easy. Um, number, well, it says C. I don't know why I start off with C, but oh well. C, it says... Um, the heat capacity for a calorimeter may be given in kilojoule per mole. 10.8 grams of hydrogen gas is burned in a bomb calorimeter. All right, resulting, releasing 1525 kilojoules of heat. The temperature of the calorimeter changes from 14 to 96. So if it's a, if it's a bomb calorimeter, then yeah, it's not going to be that one that we, we're not going to burn hydrogen gas in a little 
paper cup or anything like that, explode hydrogen gas. Hindenburg, it had hydrogen gas in it and it exploded. See, that would show you not to do that in your in the lab. But in a bomb calorimeter, but it doesn't matter what's a bomb calorimeter or whatever, and it's like a big heavy piece of metal and it's going to happen inside. In fact, a diesel engine, if you heard of a diesel engine, that um, that's an example of a bomb calorimeter where it explodes it inside a big block of metal like inside there. Okay, but in the calorimeter, 10.8 grams of hydrogen gas. And it's burned and it releases 1525 kilojoules of heat. Heat released. Um, so um, that reaction releases that. So it actually, you could say Q is negative 1525. It releases it. You know, if you wanted to burn hydrogen, guess what the, the reaction would be? H2, because oxygen combustion gives you water. Yay. They didn't give you the reaction. You don't really need that here, I don't believe at all. But and anyway, but that reaction, they're saying delta. Oh no, no, we're not doing delta H. Sorry, I was about to do that, and I did realize no, no, we're not doing that for this one. Okay, number one, um, our temperature changes from fourteen to ninety-six. Number one, calculate the heat capacity of the calorimeter. Now they call this the heat. The calorimeter constant is called the heat capacity. Now remember, for a metal, we call it the specific heat capacity. Because every metal type, copper, gold, iron, lead, zinc, tin, they're, they're all going to have their own specific heat capacity. But for the, um, the calorimeter, it will have its heat capacity. So they use a term, I don't know, I like to say calorimeter constant. But anyway, calculate the heat capacity or the calorimeter constant of the calorimeter. So, watch how easy this is. As long as you know the equation... Q equals C delta T. Now, um, in this particular experiment, in a bomb calorimeter, the, um, the calorimeter is, is going to absorb all the heat. Okay, So the, the reaction releases the heat, and the calorimeter itself absorbs all the heat. So that's another advantage to using a bomb calorimeter. But anyway, so Q for the calorimeter will be the constant for the calorimeter, times T2 minus T1. So let's plug in the numbers. The final temperature of the calorimeter was 96 degrees Celsius. 96.0. Well, no, not yet. The initial temperature was 14 degrees Celsius. So 96 point, then 14 degrees Celsius. And then, now, what is Q? Okay, since the reaction released 1525, we know that the calorimeter, um, well, you could also say this if you wanted to. Q of the reaction plus Q of the calorimeter has to equal zero. So if the reaction is negative 1525 kilojoules, then you know, plus Q cal equals zero, then you know that the calorimeter has to be positive 1525. And that makes sense. So it's going to release, it's going to absorb all the heat. 1525 kilojoules equals C times the temperature final minus initial. Can you see how easy this one is getting? 96 minus 14 is 82. So 82 times C equals 1525. Oh boy, hurt that chalk. Okay, so now I'll divide both by 82. So 1525 divided by 82, and I get 18.6. Um, now, I should have kept my unit in there. Kilojoule, and that's these are all Celsius right here. Um, oh, yeah, I have C, and I also have de degrees Celsius. But anyway, it's going to be kilojoule per degree Celsius. That's the unit for the calorimeter constant. So 18.6 kilojoule per degrees Celsius. So all you have to do is take 1525 and divide it by divide it by the temperature change. So that's all you had to do. Um, if you wanted to rewrite it, C equals Q divided by delta T. That's all we had to do. But Q of the calorimeter. So just be careful. Q of the reaction, and I should have written that up here too, that equals Q of the reaction. When it said burning hydrogen produced this much, that's Q of the reaction. 
cube of the calorimeter will be the opposite. It gained all that heat. We're assuming that it was done in the calorimeter. Okay. Now, all right, 18.6 is the calorimeter constant. Now, that was part one of the question. Now we're probably going to use it on the other parts. Part two says, calculate the energy of combustion for hydrogen in kilojoule per gram. Oh, this is an interesting little thing, too. Um, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff on the AP and in on thermo that you don't even need an equation because they tell you what to do. When you read that equation, it says, calculate energy of combustion. They could have asked this for number one before they asked number two. I don't think you even, yeah, you didn't even need that here. Calculate energy of combustion for hydrogen in kilojoule per gram. They're telling you what to do. The energy of combustion. So if you wanted to, you could call this delta H COMB combustion of, um, of H2 <laughs> and then kilojoule over gram. They're telling you what to do. You don't have to write that down. All they're wanting you to do is divide kilojoule by gram. Per means divided by. So for hydrogen, it was negative 1535. So you are going to use the reaction one because it produced heat. Divided by how many grams of hydrogen did you have? 10.8. 10.8 grams of H2. So isn't that easy? So 1525 divided by 10.8 gives you 141 kilojoule per gram of H2. I would put H2, and also do not forget, it needs to be a negative number. So that would be it right there. The energy of combustion would be delta, I could put delta H combustion H2, or delta H just H2, would be negative 141 kilojoule per gram of H2, okay? And then number three says, if 75 grams of hydrogen at 215 Celsius is burned in the calorimeter, what will be the final temperature of the calorimeter? 75 grams of hydrogen at negative 215 is burned in the calorimeter. What will be the final temperature of the calorimeter? Okay. Um, wow, there's a couple of things going on. This could have been two questions, actually, and the AP might now do it as two questions, but I'll do this, I'll do it this way. First, we have 75 grams of H2. I think I can fit it on the chalkboard. I might have to go down and get it to fit. All right, 75 grams of hydrogen is burned in the calorimeter. So if that is burned, first of all, let's find out how much heat is going to be released. So from grams of hydrogen, I can convert to kilojoules by using this number I got on the last step, negative 141 kilojoule per gram of H2. So for every one gram of H2, I get negative 141 kilojoules. So 75 times 141 is negative 10, uh, kilojoules. All right, negative 10,600 kilojoules. That is going to be the heat that is released by the hydrogen. Now, we want to know what will be the final temperature of the calorimeter. So um, the Q for the, the, this reaction equals negative 10,600. And then go back to this up here. Q of the reaction plus Q of the calorimeter has to equal zero. That means Q of the calorimeter is going to be 10,600. Um, well, I'll tell you what. Maybe I am going to er erase and do it. I'll do it up, up, up here above. I'm sorry for doing this, but let's do it with the equation as, a, as the person um, that I saw told me to do at the AP College Board. Q of the reaction plus Q of the calorimeter has to equal zero. So Q of the reaction is negative 10600 plus Q... Um, now, we could just make it C delta T right here. Ah, eh, I don't know if you want to put it here or later. Maybe I'll put it later. Equals zero. I think, yeah, he would have intended to put it right there, but oh well. It's okay. So Q cal equals negative, no, positive 
10,600. Now what I'm going to do, I'm standing right in front of all this stuff, okay, Q of the capital number is that. So now what I'm going to do is Q of the capital number is C delta T. So C times T2 minus T1 equals 10600. Oh my goodness, I erased my I erased my calorimeter constant. Did I? Or did I write it down somewhere up here? I forgot to write it down. What was it? The heat capacity. What was it? Oh, boy. Okay, well, see, I don't remember that good. It was, okay, it was 18.6, right? 18.6? Okay. The constant was equal to 18.6 kilojoule per degree Celsius. Okay, that's how it was, right? Yeah. Um, yes, that was right. 18.6 kilojoule per degree Celsius. <laughs> so I'm having to do it again right now because I didn't write it down. It was 82, yeah. Just double checking. Okay, now I'm going to plug that in for my calorimeter constant. So 18.6 kilojoule per degree Celsius times... And they said that the initial temperature was negative 215. Wow. So T2 minus negative 215 degrees Celsius equals 10,600. There's all the algebra right there. And I guess I need to have another parentheses right there. So 18.6 times um, T2 plus 215 equals 10,600. So, oh boy, 18.62 plus 18.6, a lot of algebra here. 4,000, it looks like. Actually, I got exactly 3,999, but with three sig figs, uh, we'll just say 4,000. It really only has three sig figs in it. Equals 10,600. So now subtract that. 18.62 equals 4,000. Take it from that, it could be 6,600, and then divide by 18.6. Is this all showing up on the board? This is some algebra, isn't it? And it's going to be 6,600 divided by 18.6, which is 355 degrees Celsius. Wow. <laughs> it started at negative 215, and it went all the way up to 300. Oh, you can't see all that. There, there's all the math for it. So, Q of the reaction was Q of the calorie number is zero. And then, um, this one, I put four there, but oh, it's okay. This is part three still. 10,600 plus Q of the calorie Now, the Q of the calorie number means C delta T. That's just the equation I, I substitute in. And now, I plug in the C. I plug in the initial temperature. Don't forget, it's negative temperature. I got a minus a negative there. Make it positive. Hope I didn't mess anything up there. 4,000 sounds right, 600 divide, 86, 355 is the temperature final that you're going to get degrees Celsius. Now, yeah, this question, that was a lot. I would have, I would say that now on the AP, they would not do, as I did, one, two, three. What they would do is, on three, they would just say, first they would say, they give you the whole question of three, and first they would ask you, calculate the amount of heat in kilojoules released by the hydrogen, you know, in that in that reaction, and that and then of course that would have been the uh, ten thousand six hundred kilojoules, negative ten thousand six hundred. Then the next question would be what you see here. What will be the final temperature of the calorimeter? Then you would take that number and put it into the calorimeter equation to find the other part. Okay, all right. Well, if you want to see it one more time, that'll be all. So do as I said. You can just do the problems I mentioned. Oh, where I have it written down, um, number eleven. And just number 12B if you want to. If you want to do 12, 1, 2, 3, it's kind of repetitive. That's why I thought you didn't need to do both of them. All right. But you'll get the answer key to all of this later on anyway. So you can go back over. All right. See you later.